The Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC, is one of the most important climate systems on Earth and a key indicator of the health of our ocean. But is it in danger of decline? In this special mini-series from the creators of the National Oceanography Centre's Into the Blue podcast, we speak to a range of experts to get to the bottom of the AMOC's potential decline and what we can do to stop it. Enjoy today's episode. Hello, I'm Dr Zoe Jacobs and uh, today in the third episode of our series on the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, also known as the AMOC, I'm joined by Dr Haymont Katri to discuss the consequences of a weakening AMOC and some common misconceptions that you may or may not have heard. So welcome, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Joe. So can you start by telling us a bit about your background um, and your career journey so far? Yeah, so my undergraduate degree was in chemical engineering. Mm -hmm. That was time I developed interest in climate science. So that led me to pursue my master's, then PhD in the field. So I did my PhD from Imperial College London, mm -hmm. then held position at Princeton University and mm -hmm. now at University of Liverpool. And my focus, research focus, is mo mostly on the role of oceans and climate systems. Okay. So I'm interested in how ocean circulation works, how that's changing with climate change. I focus on ocean physics pr problems mainly, like overturning circulation, ocean turbulence, how that affects regional climates and the global climate. Cool. Yeah. So has have you always studied the AMOC, or has that specific kind of system been a bit more recent? Uh, yeah, that's more recent. So uh, this is the pro work I've been doing at Liverpool, particularly for the last two years. Mm -hmm. So here I, I'm part of a, a more bigger group of a project, which is focuses on subpolar North Atlantic. Okay. And my work focuses on understanding how the atmosphere interacts with the ocean, how that controls overturning circulation on longer time scales, like okay. decadal or longer. Yeah. And how do we understand in terms of more like fundamental principles? Mm. Yeah. Cool. Sounds great. So yeah. in part one of this series on the AMOC, um, Ollie Tooth gave us a great introduction into what the AMOC actually is. Um, but I wonder if you could talk a bit about how it can affect our climate. Yeah. So in general, overturning or AMOC is a very complex system. So mm -hmm. it has multiple currents, uh, currents flows around the North Atlantic, yeah. so it makes of a big system or, um, in the basin-wide scale. In simple, in simple terms, we'll put, uh, if I have to put, it's a, it's a basically a northward motion of waters in the mostly about in upper one kilometers. Mm -hmm. And and that those waters, when they move uh, near the poles, mm -hmm. they get dense mm -hmm. by losing heat to the atmosphere yeah. and they sink. And they, then basically they return back to towards the yeah. tropics and that completes the overturning circulation. In the process, overturning circulation carries a lot of heat from the tropics. Mm -hmm. And we have seen that the how much heat is carried that basically depends on how strong the overturning circulation is. Yeah. So if overturning is weaker, then we, uh, we'll see less heat, uh, less heat transport. That will have effect on temperature in the North Atlantic Ocean. It'll be colder than normal. That will affect the precipitations and air temperature mm -hmm. over Europe. So mm -hmm. be, it will be relatively cooler weather okay. systems, less, uh, less rain. Okay. It also affects the hurricane activity in the North Atlantic. So l weaker AMOC means less hurricanes, okay. less storms, but also affects the also affects sea levels on the uh, on the coast. So mm. it has implications for floods, storm surges, yeah, and and more like that. So depending on what side of the Atlantic you're on in yes. Europe or in it'll North America, yeah. yeah. So if it's a weaker AMOC, it'll be higher sea levels on the eastern coast of the US. Okay. And lower sea levels on the I think uh, oh, on more okay. like the European coast. Yeah. yeah. Um, so as you said, um, the AMOC, so the AMOC does vary in strength, right? From year to year, yes. is that right? So what happens when it's stronger? So it's basically the opposite effect. So if a stronger AMOC, uh, more re relatively warm North Atlantic Ocean, yeah, that would lead to a relatively high air, temp air temperature in Europe. More okay. precipitation, more rain, more yeah. chance of rain, yeah. more chances of having a hurricane in the ocean. And that's basically making a landfall in Europe as well as in North America. Mm. So it's basically roughly yeah. more like a mirror image of yeah. weaker <laughs> or, or stronger AMOC. Yeah. yeah, so stronger AMOC. So here in the UK, we would expect it would be warmer, but we'd also have more rain. Yes. Okay, I'm not sure how I feel yeah, about that. Yeah. Bit of a mix. <laughs> you can say, yeah, overall yeah. the whole Europe. I would say yeah, you, yeah. UK is kind of a small in size in comparative in, in, talk in terms of yes. land scale. Yeah. No, absolutely. So... Here is uh, the big question yeah. that everyone's kind of talking about. Is the AMOC weakening? Uh, so if we talk in terms of climate models, they predict a 
decline in the AMOX trend by the end of the century. Okay. And that could be uh, different models do uh, give a different estimate. Some mm -hmm. pres uh, give estimate of 10%, some say like 30 to 40%. Yeah. And there's a large uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And that's because it's a relatively difficult system to simulate properly in yeah. the climate models. If you talk about observations, mm -hmm. uh, which have been uh, recent, so we, s we start m observing AMOC, properly measuring it, maybe in 2004, mm -hmm. and there are some estimates could go up to 1990s, 80s, but we haven't seen a strong trend in them. So we need to keep observing the system and clearly see if, if actually declining or not. Yeah. Because there's a lot of variability uh, in yeah. the background, which is very difficult to isolate. Yeah. So yeah. So models predicted, uh, we don't have the observational evidence yet, but we, uh, a, as we get a longer observation, probably we'll, we'll have a much uh, clearer answer to that. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we need to observe for long enough to check if we have decadal variability as uh, well. Yes, right? yeah, yeah, we really need to have a few more years, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So future projections generally are showing a decline or a weakening yes, in the AMOC. almost all the models show a decline. Range okay. Stuff, yes. And is there a clear time frame on that? Yes, yeah, so this decline is given on a... 100 years time scale. So okay. they uh, they tell you about until what's going to happen in 2100, something mm. like that. So yeah, models are not that great in uh, uh, simulating uh, changes which happen over 10 to 20 years of time scale, which is, there are other complications to that. But if you just look at longer term trend, they all of them uh, uh, give a decline. A decline. Basically yeah. show a decline. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so overall they're all showing a yes, decline. So yeah. it's, look, it's looking more likely than not that it's going to decline yes. with climate change. Mm -hmm. But we there must be uncertainty in exactly how much it's going yes, to decline. Yeah. I think that's the key question. Like how, how by how much? Yeah. And by by when? Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That makes sense. So um, so in future, so we talked about the changes in uh, AMOC variability. Uh, in t sorry, in terms of the strength. Yeah. Um about how if we had a weaker AMOC or a stronger mm -hmm. AMOC, what that, what that would mean for our climate. So what would happen if it were to weaken quite substantially? Yeah. What would happen for our climate then? Yeah, so as I said, so strength of AMOC has a direct implication for our northern hemisphere climate, yeah. especially for over Europe or what yeah. happens over America. Yeah. And that's basically, if we have a very weak AMOC, that will substantially reduce the, uh, the temperatures in the North Atlantic. Yeah. Or, and that has air temperatures in the Europe. So it doesn't mean, so if if it stays in a very weak state for a very long time, we expect that the North Atlantic will be relatively cooler than the global averages. It's, so it doesn't mean that we won't see temperature rises in there. So yeah. uh, it'll probably rise, but if we think in terms of the global averages, mm. it'll probably be, we'll see less increase in temperatures on Atlantic okay. compared to the global average. Okay. Now there are, of course there are uncertainties about uh, uh, how much is going to rise at yeah. the temperature wise but all, uh, uh, plus there's going to be a huge imp uh, changes in sea levels especially so which uh, which remains still an active topic of research so i can't say how much i know <laughs> again this so then uh, diff it's difficult to put numbers to it yeah basically. no of course um yeah. so we've we have touched on this a little bit in previous mm -hmm. episodes but what are the chances of a complete collapse uh yeah so that's a bit difficult to answer yeah so models uh, the, all the climate models uh, uh, do not predict a complete collapse this is the chances is really low okay uh, but there have been some more idealized studies so they are more uh, artificial experiments so they force this uh, models with uh, uh, very uh, st strong for uh, changes in the in the atmospheric conditions yeah. so for example uh, because of climate change we said but uh, polar ice is melting so mm -hmm. we have uh, the Polar seas are getting fresher yeah. and lighter, and the th theory says, and all these uh, studies suggest that if you make it very fresh, it will be very difficult for the, these northward uh, northward branch of the overturning to get dense and sink in. Right, I so see. So it'll uh, it'll make it very uh, difficult to, to sink in. Yeah, and <clears> eventually <throat> the overturning will collapse. Mm -hmm. And but all the theory and the the models have a lot of uncertainty about it. One of the key questions we really don't understand right now is uh, our climate is getting fresher if the polar regions get fresh because of melting sea ice, but also getting warmer because of okay. the climate change. Yeah. So if you take these two com uh, two different two complex uh, two parameters basically mm -hmm. together, 
what happens then is difficult to answer at the moment. Yeah. So there are chances, but it's really low for if uh, from perspective of climate models. Yeah. yeah. We don't have a clear evidence that it's going to collapse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess it's it's a kind of thing that's actually quite difficult to predict in general because it's such yes. a it would be such a kind of catastrophic event. Yes. Um, that it's quite hard. And as you say, the models are so uncertain yeah. exactly how much it's going to decline anyway. Yeah. Um. So say the worst case scenario did happen and it yeah. just stopped out of nowhere like it did in the film day after yeah. tomorrow. Um, <laughs> what would that mean for our climate? Would we be plunged into an ice age? Uh, <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> so it's again, it, it's, it's difficult. So uh, as I said, there's some literature which says if you have a complete collapse of AMOC, let's mm. say, so we expect the northern hemispheres to be relatively much colder yeah. than the southern hemisphere. Yeah. But again, the CO2 levels will be much higher than what which we have ever seen in the f yeah. history. So uh, we're we not sure if they're actually that's going to put in an ice age first. Like. Yeah. <laughs> so in addition to the what, uh, what I mentioned of in effect on North Atlantic, European weather, uh, climate, and North American climate, AMOC also has an impact on the whole no uh, northern hemisphere. For example, we have seen changes in the tropical precipitation patterns okay, sometimes yeah. as, uh, over Africa. There are some, oh, there right. are some studies, mm. even in all the way to Indian Ocean. So if we have sustained very weak AMOC or collapsed AMOC, mm. that influence of that AMOC could mm. could be global. Yeah. So in that sense, it could uh, uh, it would be very <laughs> tricky to guess it, but uh, it'll, it's very important to see it properly uh, understand how AMOC works and how actually affects yeah. the whole climate system, yeah. Yeah, as you say, yeah, I was just thinking of the kind of, the continents either side of the Atlantic, but it would be a global- It'll be a global, yeah, global yeah. effect, yeah. Um, actually, I just wanna backpedal a tiny bit. So, because we're talking about a strong AMOC or weak AMOC, what if it collapses? But what are the, what are the models, how much are the models predicting it's going to weaken by? Are we talking like 10% or are we talking like, 50%, 100%? No, yeah. So on an average, uh, if you uh, take an average of all the climate models yeah. we have, so the roughly it's about between 20 to 30% by the end of the century. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, but also, but the, uh, there's a the, uh, caveat there is not all models do a good job in, in simulating overturning mm -hmm. circulation. So... It's not like all the models actually simulate the overturn circulation on a correctly, so they, yeah. get, they don't get the strength right. Yeah. They sometimes don't, uh, don't get the, the uh, decadal changes right. Right. Okay. So, so this this ten twenty percent thirty percent decline with respect to yeah. what they simulate. Yeah. So and if you correct for that, then might be yeah. different. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. I guess because. Um, yeah, if models aren't actually correctly simulating yeah. anything now, but they're showing a decline, you've got to be careful how you interpret those results yeah. because, um, yeah, ugh, everyone gets a bit excited, don't they, when yeah. they see these kind of big model results. I mean, yeah. I, I'm a modeler. I understand. You've got to be so careful how you kind of reveal these results because yeah. if it's not doing a great job now, we can't yeah. necessarily expect yeah, the future. Yeah, we can't be sure about the numbers. In, but yeah. By theory, it makes sense. Yeah. It, yeah. <clears throat> but to be certain about what... Well, if yeah. you want to put the uncertainty <laughs> levels in there. So yeah. that's the tricky bit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, so to finish off, I just wanted to touch on one of the kind of major misconceptions yeah. people ha may have about the AMOC. Mm -hmm. um, and this might be because of media portrayal. I don't know. Not always. Maybe sometimes. Um, is um, the AMOC the same as the Gulf Stream? Uh Short answer is no. <laughs> so Gulf Stream is one part of the AMOC. Mm -hmm. So simply Gulf Stream is basically the, this strong boundary current which mm -hmm. flows along the coast of the US, starting okay. from Gulf of Mexico, yep. going northward and then separates from the US somewhere uh, 40, 40, 50 north. So I'm not sure about the latitude exactly. But that's the strong current which flows around. And because strong current is coming from tropics, it carries a lot of heat, mm -hmm. uh, but it's very warm in the yeah. core, so it's carrying a lot of heat from uh, from the tropics to all the way through yeah. somewhere to UK. Yeah. And that's why we have slightly milder yeah. weather, uh, climate than, than, let's say, Boston or New York, yeah. even though we're at the same light. Yeah. Now, this is a bit part of the AMOX, where this one current is actually carrying the heat, mm -hmm. uh, so it's basically you can uh, take it as, as a, uh, makes one part of the... the upper branch of the overturning. 
when we say overturning weakening or collapse, it says that the sinking of that overturning, that's in, inhibited by mm. some process. Yeah. Even if you collapse that, that doesn't mean that Gulf, Gulf Stream is going to collapse. Yeah. You can still. And we understand uh, in terms of theory, Gulf Stream basically is wind-driven process. It's, it's not uh, something which in uh, something happening in the ocean. So unless you stop the atmospheric winds, it's, uh, it's hard yeah. to imagine how can you stop Gulf Stream. Yeah. It can change a bit uh, yeah. in future, but complete collapse of Gulf Stream is... Uh, 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 it's really not, I don't think it's possible. Even more unlikely yes, than the AMOC. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just a, it's a major part, a major component of the AMOC. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's definitely. Yeah. So um, one final question that we're asking all of our guests that are yeah. coming on this series. So in your opinion, um, what needs to, to happen to protect the AMOC and ensure mm. it continues to regulate mm. our climate? Uh, so I think there are a lot of, there are many factors which influence AMOX. It's mm -hmm. hard to just say, just to control one and they'll yeah. protect AMOX. I think one of the key things would be we need to protect uh, what's happening in the, in the polar ice. Okay. We need to take uh, steps to protect uh, or mitigate the effect of climate change on what's happening in the Arctic and Antarctica, yeah. in the ice melting. Mm. And plus, we need, I would support... Uh, Continuing observation of EMRs. Okay. Yeah. So once we understand what's uh, how what the processes which mm. drive uh, overturning circulation, or how the uh, different processes control overturning circulation at different time scales mm. or different times, mm. then probably we have hope to actually incorporate those processes in, in a better way in the models and improve it. And yeah. then once we predict that in a proper way, yeah, then we can uh, suggest okay what kind of sp uh, concrete steps could be taken to protect this yeah. this global uh, circulation in a sense. Yeah. So yeah, uh, until then, it, it's a, uh, the, we basically should mitigate climate change in all possible ways. Yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. Yes. <laughs> cool, thank you so much for joining us today. All right, thank you. To find out more about Knox research into the AMOC or to check out the other episodes from this mini series, visit our website, knock.ac.uk. If you'd like to listen to more of our podcasts, both seasons of Into the Blue are available on our YouTube channel on all major podcast platforms. See you next time.